This is Field Sports Channel News. A Saab who spat on a farmer at a Boxing Day hunt meet has been convicted of assault. She was arrested at the Fitzwilliam Hunt's meet in Cambridgeshire after she spat on the farmer's face. The Saab also screamed at passing riders. I wonder which one might fall off and break their neck. She lunged at the farmer before police grabbed her and carried her away. The Saab pleaded guilty to assault by beating and received a 12-month conditional discharge. She's been ordered to pay compensation, court costs and an additional surcharge. Everybody is entitled to peaceful protest, but their behaviour of this anti-hunting activist was appalling. We praise the police for taking swift action against those who are intent on sabotaging a lawful activity and who pose a serious threat to those who take part. Bird flu is spilling over into mammals, including foxes and otters. The Animal and Plant Health Agency, APHA, tested 66 mammals, including seals, and found nine otters and foxes were positive for avian influenza, H5N1. APHA adds that there is a very low likelihood of any widespread infection in GB mammals. Dominic Bolton from Aim to Sustain says farmers, gamekeepers and shooters have minimised risks with biosecurity measures. Uh, we've now been through a complete shooting season with no reports of any um, shooting related activities being responsible for uh, transmission of the disease. Exmoor's wild deer may be linked to an outbreak of TB in local cattle herds. That's the conclusion of scientist Keith Collard, who tested more than 100 wild red deer in the area. 30 deer tested positive for TB. Dr Collard said there is a significant correlation between the number of farms with TB reactors and the number of TB positive deer in the regions. Dr Collard finds that Tony Blair's stag hunting ban is a factor. The lack of disturbance due to hunting with hounds has had a major effect on the tendency for deer to congregate in high concentrations, which has contributed to the high level of TB in deer. Thanks to Richard Walton for the story. The BBC has announced it's cancelling the Autumn Watch programme shortly after Chris Packham revealed that he was taking a break from television. The broadcaster blamed challenging times financially. Packham says he has cancelled all TV work for three months to create abstract sculptures of birds, snakes and humpback whales. He is also threatening to sue Field Sports Channel for libel and you can read his correspondence with us via the link below. A feasibility study is underway to explore reintroducing black grouse to Sussex. Natural England is funding the report, which will establish if the species could be released at Ashdown Forest. The site that has been identified for the possible release is a 2,500 hectare area of open heathland and woodland along the High Weald in East Sussex. It is the largest area with open public access in South East England. Currently, the species is found in Northern England, North Wales and Scotland but its range used to extend further south. Ashdown Forest was the last stronghold for the species in Sussex, which persisted there until the early 1900s, with the last on record, a female spotted in 1937. Basque says the future of Wales's most threatened species is at risk because of a potential snare ban. The criticism comes after the publication of the Economy, Trade and Rural Affairs Committee's report on the Agriculture Wales Bill. The majority of the committee's members voted to ban snares in Wales. Two members noted that a blanket ban removes any opportunity to use snares as a method of predator control for restoring species, including projects funded by the Welsh Government. Basque's Wales director Steve Griffiths says the use of the most modern snare designs, known as humane cable restraints, have an important role to play in land management and the conservation of ground nesting birds. A wildlife charity is asking for action from the UK's national grid after five swans flew into new power lines. The Secret World Wildlife Rescue found the swans dead on the ground near newly built pylons in Somerset. One swan was still alive and they released it. The Wildlife Rescue staff claim that when swans collide with power lines, it blows them apart. A one-eyed seal trapped in a Essex reservoir that was eating up all the fish has died. The Marks Hall Fisheries Lake was forced to close when the seal swam in and evaded capture. It is estimated the visitor has eaten £3,000 worth of fish. It was also eating local ducks. The seal, which spent weeks in the lake, had multiple injuries. The British Divers Marine Life Rescue decided to anaesthetise the animal in the hope of rescuing it, but the seal was trapped underwater and died. 
Nick North, who leases the lake from the local council, says he had nothing to do with the decision to use a tranquilizer dart on the animal. And he's have sent him death threats. The Australian politician who released the addresses of firearms owners to a newspaper is now asking for those same firearms owners to have mental health checks. 20 people died from gunshot wounds in Western Australia last year, and Police Minister Paul Papalia says mental health issues were involved in at least half of those deaths. He fails to mention that 18 of those 20 deaths were from illegal guns. He claims he's not being vindictive or punitive towards gun owners. They think differently. Thanks to Jeff Hotchkiss for the story. And finally, scientists have revealed that Neanderthals hunted elephants that weighed up to 12 tons. The study carried out by Johannes Gutenberg University in Germany analyzed the 125,000 year old remains of a prehistoric species of giant elephant, around twice the size of the modern day animal, with tusks that reached up to 10 feet in length, giving it the name the straight tusked elephant. Marks found on the bones suggest the mammals had been thoroughly butchered to ensure all meat and fat was stripped from the bone. That meat could feed up to 100 people for a month. Thank you to Per Homseth for the story. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.